If we had had this charter a few years ago, and above all, the will to use it, millions now dead would be alive. There's no doubt that an agreement could ever be reached by these 50 countries differing so much in race and religion, in language and culture. They even helped to carry the desks in. We stand today at the threshold of a great event, both in the life of the United Nations and in the life of mankind. This Universal Declaration of Human Rights may well become the international Magna Carta of all men everywhere. In order to eliminate the threat to the peace in Palestine, an armistice shall be established in all sectors. An armistice agreement has been entered into between the United Nations Command and the commanders of the communist forces in Korea. For the first time in the world's history, a permanent international body to deal exclusively with the problems of non-self-governing peoples. We will be even prouder when we can leave the Congo solely and fully in the good hands of its own people. Dag Hammarskjöld is dead, but the United Nations lives. <laughs> We've seen a return to democracy in many countries. I hereby certify that the electoral process in Namibia has been free and fair. The dawn of a new era. I therefore have the honor to declare the Republic of Namibia membership in the United Nations. It's a major contributor to the success of the election of the Haitian people. They decided to come out and to vote on the side of their own destiny. The people of Mozambique who once again prove their commitment to democracy and a strong will to live in peace and harmony. The Treaty for the Non-Proliferation of Nuclear Weapons. It is the most important international agreement in the field of disarmament since the nuclear age began. We should not confuse the signing of agreements with the solving of problems. Much work remains to be done, but the significant progress represents real successful diplomacy. United Nations Peacekeeping Forces received the Nobel Peace Prize for 1988. Peacekeeping operations symbolize the world community's will to peace. The creation of a UN Peacekeeping Force for Cyprus could only come about by positive action of this council. The protection of civilians is at the center of the United Nations Peace and Security Agenda. The first session of the International Tribunal for Serious Violations of International Humanitarian Law committed in the former Yugoslavia. We have 113 trucks a day. At the same time, it is not like going through Fifth Avenue. You know, we have to negotiate with checkpoints everywhere in order to make sure that we reach the people. We're starting with no government, no civil services, nothing remains in Somalia except some spirit and some hope. I need your assistance so that I will be able to convince the member state to continue to offer the humanitarian assistance. The right of life, the right to be free from torture and physical maltreatment, a lack of fair trial, limitations on freedom of speech, freedom of religion, freedom of movement. I am here to listen to you. I am here to learn. Tell me, frankly, how you believe the United Nations, myself and my colleagues, can be helpful to you. Minutes ago, an explosion ripped through a hotel in central Baghdad, the headquarters for the UN. The UN and the international community here have been simply stunned by what's happened. Officials are saying they believe it was a suicide attack. 100 people are wounded and 22 killed. Today we share our shock and sorrow at the loss of people we loved. Democracy, which everybody is striving for, is really a rather meaningless phrase if people don't have enough to eat. The international economic situation has become harsh and unfavorable for all developing countries, especially Africa. Realizing every person's rights to food is a moral and humanitarian imperative. Hunger is a stain on humanity. We are working together as a movement to tackle hunger now and in the future. The humanitarian case is clear. We know that it will be the world's poorest citizens who will be hardest hit by climate change. I believe that mankind has looked at climate change as if it were a fiction. 
Every week we're seeing evidence that accelerated climate change is here right now. None of this is hysteria, it is fact. And I'm beginning to wonder how many more alarm bells must go off before the world rises to the challenge. Exactly. Only courageous leadership will make the goals of Paris a reality. Behind every refugee, behind every migrant, there is a family, there is skills, knowledge, there is a story, and above all, I would say, uh, incredible resilience. I would like to pay my tribute to all who were far-sighted enough to insert an article in the Charter covering the principle of equality between men and women. It is the first intergovernmental meeting in the world where women form part of virtually every delegation. Even in their oppression, Women in South Africa can never be equal to their men. Let us remember those women who, during the early years of the United Nations, kept alive the flame of women's issues at a time when it was not the accepted subject it is today. We want to end gender inequality, and we don't just want to talk about it. We want to try and make sure that it's tangible. Unless you disperse immediately, I shall have to use force. It will forever remain an indelible blight on human history that the apartheid crime ever occurred. It will forever remain an accusation and a challenge to all men and women of conscience that it took as long as it has before all of us stood up to say enough is enough. Each Lenten represents the hope we have for our future because of the commitments you have made to the global goals. A renewal of commitment by leader after leader. This is absolutely critical to respond to challenges that affect all countries. Poverty, gross inequalities, discrimination against women and girls, climate change, and a rapidly deteriorating natural environment. We are off track. Let's make it a turning point for people and for planet and deliver a decade of action in achieving the SDGs. If we should falter in the future, in our will to use it, millions now living will surely die. Today's United Nations does more than ever before. It does it better than ever before. Yet, our work is far from complete. Indeed, it will never be. Excellencies, global citizens, thank you for joining us online to commemorate the signing of the Charter of the United Nations. Today's event is open to all, and I encourage you to interact with our panels to discuss the principles and relevance of the UN Charter, the increased need for international cooperation, and Agenda 2030 for sustainable development. This event takes place as many people suffer and bear great losses due to the COVID-19 pandemic. However, we draw strength from those who have persevered in the past in the face of great despair. This includes the pen holders of the UN Charter who dared to imagine a better world defined by peace and equality. On June 26, 1945, leaders gathered in San Francisco to sign the Charter of the United Nations thereby establishing an international organization of unrivaled reach and legitimacy with a new rules-based world order at its core. Thus, the United Nations were created to, among other things, save succeeding generations from the scourge of war. Today, 75 years on, we'll hear from each regional group of the UN and from, from the principles of its main organs the General Assembly is the primary deliberative, policy-making, and representative body of the United Nations, a parliament of humanity based upon equality of voice and vote. It's a forum to share perspectives, forge partnerships, and build consensus. The Assembly provides a space where members can generate understanding and reach compromise. General Assembly resolutions reflect the aspirations of humanity paving way for the normative development of international law, 
with far-reaching ramifications across a wide range of issues affecting the people we serve. The Universal Declaration of Human Rights was adopted by a GA resolution in 1948. The Paris Climate Agreement, a feat of multilateralism, began in embryonic form as a General Assembly resolution. At the 50th anniversary of the United Nations, the Assembly adopted a resolution on the most authoritative and comprehensive formulation of the principle of self-determination. We continue to promote equality and dignity for all, including through the GA-mandated International Decade of Recognition, Justice and Development for People of African Descent. At the outset of the COVID-19 pandemic, member states adopted GA resolutions which call for solidarity and global access to medicines and medical equipment. Currently, there is an omnibus resolution under negotiation to address all aspects of our response to the pandemic. The membership has taken historic steps to enable the UN to operate during this period by adopting decisions under silence procedure. Intergovernmental negotiations on the declaration for the commemoration of the 75th anniversary of the United Nations continued throughout this period. This has en ensured business continuity as we herald the beginning of the record of action and delivery to implement the UN Sustainable Development Goals. In 2015, the membership of the General Assembly pledged to leave no one behind and shift the world onto a path of sustainable development and prosperity for all. Now we must fulfill our commitments to finance sustainable development and engage business leaders to align with the principles for responsible business of the UN Global Compact. As we work toward the future we want and the UN we need, we must be results focused. Now more than ever, we need a strong UN development system and effective collaboration between the UN and international financial institutions. In pursuit of inclusive multilateralism, we must continue to create space for civil society and ensure the full participation of voices that have gone unheard for too long, those of women, youth, indigenous persons, and people with disabilities. This is a moment of reckoning for our shared planet and shared future. This is a time for action, ambition, and partnership. Three quarters of a century ago, skeptics doubted the result the resolve of the members of the United Nations. Cynicism did not prevail then, nor will it now. We, the peoples, remain nations united, guided by the principles of our charter. I thank you. Mr. President of the General Assembly, Excellencies, I send my warmest greetings to we, the peoples. Those first three words of our founding charter, adopted 75 years ago today, give the United Nations its vision and its mission. We exist to serve people and we work as one for the benefit of all. The charter was adopted as the Second World War was in its final months and winding down. We mark the anniversary of that milestone as global pressures are spiraling up. The charter brought rules and hope to a world in ruins. It remains our touchstone for a world mirrored in a pandemic, torn by discrimination, endangered by climate change and scared by poverty, inequality and war. Agreement on the Charter closed one era and opened another. Gone were the genocidal Nazi regime and their allies. In came the prospect of human rights. Out went rampant nationalism and precarious balance of power that produced two catastrophic world wars. In came the promise of collective security and the peaceful resolution of disputes. And where an earliest attempt at international organization dissolved, the new United Nations started life on firmer ground, built on norms and the lessons of hard experience. The post-war multilateral arrangements have compiled a solid record of service, saving millions of lives, advancing the human condition, and fulfilling its cardinal task of preventing World War III. But there have been painful setbacks, and today's realities are as forbidding as ever. 
COVID-19 has touched everyone everywhere, precisely the kind of global challenge for which the United Nations was founded. At the same time, people continue to lose trust in political establishments. Today's marches against racism were preceded by widespread protests against inequality, discrimination, corruption, and lack of opportunities all over the world, grievances that still need to be addressed, including with a renewed social contract. Meanwhile, other fundamental fragilities have only grown. The climate crisis, environmental degradation, cyber attacks, nuclear proliferation, a pushback on human rights, and the risk of another pandemic. It's not difficult to imagine a new virus transmitted as easily as COVID-19, but as deadly as Ebola. The delegates in San Francisco in 1945, having themselves lived through a global pandemic, depression and war, seized their opportunity to plant the seeds of something better and new. Today, we must do the same. To achieve that watershed moment, we need to reimagine multilateralism, give it this to function as the founders intended, and ensure that effective global governance is a reality when it is needed. We must also bring others to the table in an inclusive and networked multilateralism, since governments are only part of today's political realities. Civil society, cities, the private sector, and young people are essential voices in shaping the world we want. Like those who drafted the Charter, we must look without illusion at today's injustices, their roots, and the suffering they engender. Yet, there is also much to encourage us and drive us onward. The heroism and solidarity of the pandemic response, the global embrace of the Sustainable Development Goals, the millions of young activists and global citizens pushing to advance equality, climate action, a green economy, and to take control of their destiny. I'm inspired by so much that has been built and achieved across 75 years. I pay tribute to the service and sacrifice of thousands of United Nations peacekeepers, staff and others who across the world and across the years gave their lives while advancing the causes and values of the United Nations. The Charter's vision stands the test of time and its values will continue to carry us forward. Now is the time to persevere, press ahead, pursue our goals, show responsibility for our world and take care of each other. It is up to us to rise to the test of this pivotal moment for our future. Thank you.